Hey y'all, this is Lou Temple. You know me as Axel from The Walking Dead, and you're watching Rocking Dead with Eric Broadbent on Rocking Dead TV. You follow me? Hey everyone, Eric here from the EVH and Gear TV Network, and of course, Rocking Dead, back with you today, bringing you another The Walking Dead related video. Today we'll be recapping the massive second last episode from Season 9 that aired last night, plus we'll be taking a look at some exclusive photos from next week's season finale as well. Okay, so before we begin, we'll need to issue a major spoiler warning here, as this will be discussing at length the characters that were affected, so this is your spoiler warning. Now that we have that out of the way, let's discuss one of the craziest episodes in The Walking Dead's history. While we do that, please enjoy some exclusive photos of next week's season finale episode 16, The Storm. Also, if you're new here, please consider hitting that subscribe button for more cool The Walking Dead content and awesome music content on our other shows as well. We'll work very hard to keep you as a subscriber too. So in my last Rocking Dead video, I mentioned the names of the victims, but we'll recap them here again today. Just as I mentioned in the last video, there's a character or two that I did not really like on the show, and I said I would not be upset at all if they're amongst the victims. I also mentioned that I'm sure there might be a tiny bit of guilt for feeling that way, and sure enough, I had a few moments of it. We'll get to that shortly. For an extended 80 minute presentation, it did not take long for the action and pacing to rock. We start off with a cheery hilltop couple sharing some happy anniversary well wishes with each other, then set out in a wagon, only to be shown in the next scene, dead and scalped by Alpha, as she, in a, such a true, creepy Alpha fashion, sings her lullaby that she would always sing to Lydia as a young child. The scalping, along with hat and wardrobe, would later assist Alpha to infiltrate the fair, completely undetected. It's funny, in my last video I was referring to candy apples on sticks, and sure enough we see that in this episode, as Enid, Alden, and Luke are walking around the fair. Was that foreshadowing for what else was going to be on sticks later in the episode, or were they just candy apples on sticks? Doesn't really matter either way, but I just found it funny, and I mentioned in my last video only to see it in this episode. Alright, so let's get down to the list of victims again, and here they are. Ozzy, uh, he might have been a cool character. I mean, honestly, with such little screen time, but I think more likable than some of the other characters that had been on the, on the show for quite some time. I think he was a very interesting character, unfortunately. Uh, he's gone, Ozzy being the uh, one of the, the, well, the leader of the Highwaymen. And his, uh, his second in command, uh, the Highwayman second in command, if I get his name. But anyways, really had no impact on the show. And pretty much, like, a, I, I can refer to some of these people as, like, the Star Trek red shirts, you know? Basically, the first one's down to the planet, boom, they're dead. If you're wearing a red shirt, your time is kind of limited. Uh, you're dispensable, in other words. Okay, next up is DJ. I was actually starting to like him after redeeming himself as a savior and becoming a loyal supporter of Team Rick. I think he had real potential on the show. Unfortunately, he was uh, met met his maker from the Whispers as well. Frankie, really kind of a useless character. However, she was starting to get a fresh new life after being out from under, underneath Negan's control, one of Negan's multiple wives. Uh, imagine he's when he finds out about that, he might be a little upset. Now, Tammy Rose. This one was spoiled in advance by a social media post from the actress that plays Tammy, Brett Butler, but it was also a hard death to accept, having the fact that they just temporarily adopted a baby uh, with her husband, Earl. I can only imagine what that's going to do to Earl. I mean, the fact that he's, uh, you know, a recovering alcoholic, and this will certainly not help that cause. Addie, another one, really. This is one of the teens from the Hilltop. Another red shirt, I would honestly say, and in my opinion. Um, I don't think her character would have ever brought anything of importance to The Walking Dead. I did find it interesting, though, that they kept her glasses on her reanimated head. Next up, another one of the teens, Rodney, uh, really a character that would have never brought anything of interest to the show. Again, here, just in my opinion, Tara. Okay, so now we're talking. Tara, however, was a character I never liked, but she deserves credit as she's been with the show since season four, climbing the ranks and becoming a series regular. I just felt her contributions were always weak, and no matter how much I tried to like her, I just couldn't. I honestly wish the writers would have given uh, more of her screen time to Jesus, another character that is no longer with us. But like I mentioned in my last video, even though that I was pleased to hear that Tara would be exiting, I did share a moment of guilt, and we'll discuss that once we wrap up the final list of victims here. Next up, Enid. Again, I hate to say it, but I never did like Enid's character. 
around the time of her entrance on the show during the short-lived Wolves story arc, I never trusted the character. Trust did come over time, especially with her relationship with Carl, and then becoming a medical assistant along with Sadiq. But even though I started to trust the character, I did not enjoy the character. Trust is one thing and enjoyment is another. Last up is Henry. I'm sure this was enjoyed by some as many people were hating on Henry. I was not much of a fan either. But it was very cool to see him evolve. Now, my thoughts on how this could have been a more shocking and everlasting impact, not only on the characters, but also to us as fans, the writers were really starting to make us nervous about Jerry. It felt like for sure he was in harm's way. Couple that with comic source material and having King Ezekiel and Rosita on the pikes, I think they could have really shocked us by including Jerry and one of either the King or Rosita. Keep in mind, I love the characters of King Ezekiel and Jerry. Rosita, to me, would have not upset me at all losing her, but would have added to the impact. But in the end, they did kill 10 characters in one episode. Big, small, or anywhere in between characters, it was very emotional. Let's get to why I had some guilt over some or maybe even all of these deaths in some way. We get to see a scene where Alpha's crew has all the hostages, minus Ozzy, Ozzy's right-hand man, and DJ, tied and bound in a barn. Ozzy and team rush in with knives, axes, etc., and assist their friends, taking out some of the whisperers in return, and everyone fought for their lives. But in the end, it was all for nothing, as everyone was killed by the whisperers. So it lets you really feel what they went through. They had a brief moment of hope that they were going to be saved. That scene had impact like no tomorrow. Overall, I really enjoyed the episode and would honestly give it a good 8.5, 9 out of 10. Had they substituted one death for either King Ezekiel, Jerry, or Rosita, I would give it a perfect 10 out of 10. And again, please keep in mind, I love the characters of the King and Jerry. The cool thing is, this kind of shock is either in a mid-season or end-season finale. We still have one more episode to go. Many things to look forward to that episode, including Snow for the very first time in the history of The Walking Dead. Now, before we wrap up, let's talk Sadiq. What are your thoughts on Sadiq? I know there are some unconfirmed rumors out there that he's a traitor, and I honestly truly believe it. I feel that he is, and his life was spared to assist Alpha and crew capturing his friends and possibly even assisting in killing them. I feel quite strongly that he may be a traitor, and if so, that kind of adds more shock to the death of Carl, as Carl risked his life and eventually died for Sadiq. So here's what I want to hear your thoughts. A few things here, and please comment down below with answers to these questions. Uh, how did the deaths affect you? Do you think Sadiq is a traitor, and how involved do you think he was? And do you think Jerry is still safe, as they were really giving him more screen time lately, showing all the happy scenes and just a lot of Jerry time. You know, even back when you're trying to find the bulb for the projector and things like that, you come close to possibly getting killed there. Uh, just happy, happy, happy times. And you know when they show everything that's so happy in people's lives, where that can go on The Walking Dead. So do me a favor and share your comments uh, below. I think that will just about cover this episode, and I really hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed these photos uh, from the exclusive photos from AMC for next week's episode, uh, season finale, episode 16, The Storm. Looking forward to hearing all of your thoughts and everything I've just uh, asked you about here a moment ago. And if you did enjoy this video today, please consider giving a thumbs up and subscribe. And as I always say, I promise to work just as hard to keep you as a subscriber as I did to get you. All right, everyone. Hope you enjoy next week's finale. We'll look forward to talking to you very, very soon. And until next time, cheers.